After watching this video, you'll be able to make realistic images like this and how you can get really creative like this picture of the Statue of Liberty taking a selfie or how to make any really cool and artistic looking image using Midjourney. So after going to midjourney.com and creating an account, you'll be brought to this screen here. And the first thing I wanted to cover is this top bar here where you'll actually put in your prompt. And one of the most important things to know about it is the settings here. So if you click on this icon, th these are all the default settings that you can set. Do dash dash and then the parameter and then usually the text that goes along with that parameter. Doing that will override these settings. For now, walk you through what each setting is. The image size is exactly what it sounds like. So you can have a portrait sized image, square or landscape. And then going over to the right is the, this first slider here is stylization. So if you want a more artsy look to your image, you can adjust that here from zero to 1000. And that determines how much of Midjourney's art filter will be applied. And this weirdness setting is exactly how it sounds like. You can adjust this from zero to 3000 and you'll get some re really weird images if you max that out. And then third, the variety slider. Midjourney will actually make four images for you per prompt you put this variety slider just tells you how different those four images will be so if you want to just kind of get some ideas at first you can kind of max out this slider and then work off of one of the pictures if you like what it made or if you know what you want and you're just kind of fine tuning then you'll want to pick a number that's down here this mode is pretty important so if you select raw, all that means is Midjourney's AI filter won't be applied. And this is how you can get a uh, realistic looking images. And then standard is with Midjourney's art filter applied. So if you select raw, your stylization should be pretty much zero because this slider won't actually do much because it's not being applied. But standard, this will actually have an effect on your photo. And then with the speed selection, Midjourney charges you with fast hours. And if you use the relax selection, then you won't spend any fast hours. And a beginner mistake you should avoid is saying you don't want to include anything. So if you've ever used like ChatGPT or another large language model like that it would work in that case but midjourney does work a little different so anything you type in here midjourney will assume that is something you want to include in that image and here i'll show you the difference i've written a picnic basket with strawberries and then i've written this uh permutation here within curly brackets so what that means exactly is this is how you can do a quick shortcut on making different versions of the same prompt very quickly. So what this will do is create a picnic basket with strawberries and then add this first section here separated by a comma. So the first prompt will be a picnic basket with strawberries dash dash no blueberries which is our parameter that specifically tells Midjourney that you don't want to include blueberries in your image. And then the second set of images that it'll create is this one here, where we're telling Midjourney that we want to image a picnic basket with strawberries, don't include blueberries. Well, as I told you earlier, anything you type in here, unless it has this parameter, in front, anything you type in here, Midjourney will likely include it in your image. So let's go ahead and press enter and see what Midjourney gives us. So every four images horizontally is 
one prompt or one job as mid-journey calls it. Since we did those permutation with the curly brackets, it created two jobs at once. So the first one, this is the prompt it actually used to generate each uh, set of images. So the first one was a picnic basket with strawberries. Don't include blueberries. Even though we specifically said don't include blueberries, every image has blueberries in it. If we look at the second set of images, here the prompt it was given was a picnic basket with strawberries, but you'll see it has this extra no blueberries tag under here, whereas our first one doesn't have anything like that. And it, because we use that parameter, dash dash no, and then the word blueberries here it tells you concepts to exclude from your prompt so we want to exclude blueberries and none of these images have blueberries in them because of that so now the next thing i want to show you is the difference between the standard mode and the raw mode so standard like i said before applies midjourney's artistic filter to it and then raw doesn't have that filter on it and to reuse a prompt from a set of images, all you need to do is click here, use text, and it'll automatically put it up in the prompt bar here. So here to quickly compare when having Midjourney's filter on or off, here I've used the permutation again, where a little trick you can do is if you want nothing to, if you don't want anything extra added, to your sentence, you can do curly bracket and then just no space and then comma right away. So that first prompt will be just a picnic basket with strawberries and then it'll apply these default settings that I have, which is standard with the stylization all the way up. So this will, this one will apply Midjourney's artistic filter to it. And then the second one will be a picnic basket with strawberries, dash dash style raw and dash dash stylize zero. And what that will do is if we go over to the mode here and a quick way to know which dash dash whatever word it would be, you can see it by hovering over these question mark symbols. And if you see the star mode and then look all the way to the right, it says dash dash style. And since I did dash dash style raw, it will make, it will select this option for the second one. And then as far as dash dash stylize zero, same thing. If we hover over the question mark, you'll see that it says dash dash stylize. And then you can input a number from zero to a thousand. So this one is turning it all the way down so that Midjourney's filter isn't applied. So now let's see what Midjourney gives us. So here are the two sets of images Midjourney made. We got both prompts being a picnic basket with strawberries, same thing for the second one. But here's the difference is this first set is style raw with stylized zero, just like how we set in that permutation in the curly brackets. And this the second set does not have the raw style raw tag and the stylize is at a thousand. So that means this one is the very mid journey AI artistic filter on it. And this one is should have no artistic filter on it. Let's take a look at the artsy ones first. So you'll notice the main background. It kind of makes it try to look as kind of like a painting as much as possible. So you have the picnic basket with strawberries, but then the background and all around it is not like a natural setting where you would find this, especially this one having it, strawberries all around it, and then the painting in the background. You can tell here Midjourney is trying to make it look more artsy. Now let's look at our more realistic images. This is exactly how you would expect to find picnic basket so this is just the basket out on a picnic blanket out in a field somewhere mid journey didn't try to make it artsy it only tried to make it as realistic as possible and because of that it made it 
in a field somewhere with a picnic blanket resulting in more realistic images. But here is how you can work off an existing image. So if you click on the image that you want to work off of, you can find all of those actions here under the creation actions. If yours looks a little different than mine, go to more options and here you can check mark or select each setting that you want. So for vary, you can ask Midjourney to make a subtle change or strong change. So anything subtle will keep most of the image but might change the color or other smaller detail or maybe the number of strawberries here. Strong, it'll most likely create a whole different scene but kind of keep the same theme of it and the same components in the picture. And then upscale is just kind of making the image more 3D. And then remix is how you can fine tune the image with a prompt. You can tell Midjourney exactly what you want changed. And the pan feature, you can actually have Midjourney generate what would be on the outside of this image here. So on the top of the image, down, left, or right, you, if you select, say, the top, it will gem generate more of the top of this photo. Something that might be above this is more the sun or the trees in the background. So if you wanted more of that in the image, then you can use this pan creation action. And then for zoom, it's exactly what it sounds like. Let you zoom out one and a half times or two. And this two selection, you can actually put your own custom zoom level. So you can type anything in here, three, three and a half, five, whatever number you would like. You can also choose to rerun the same prompt again. Or editor, you can highlight specific parts of the image and change it without changing any other part of the image. Here you can use the image itself as an input to your next prompt you put in. And you can use image just as a plain input style or just copy the prompt into the input bar. And here I'll, I'll show you the difference between the three. All right, after putting that in, this is the images Midjourney gave me. So here I used it as a style reference and then the image itself was used as an input. So you see the main difference here is this style reference is going to just kind of use the style of the image, not necessarily the image itself in the new creation. You can think of it as, you know, inspiration from that image. So it's going to use a lot of the colors, a lot of the same kind of style from that image. You know, like a faded background was also in the new generated images, the grass. So it's, it's the same style, but it won't use that image directly. And then here is where I use the image itself as an input. And Midjourney will make an effort to use that image in the new set of images. So here it looks like it used the image I gave it, but added a German Shepherd into it in some kind of way. And with the more creation actions, we can go to this editor tool, which is pretty cool. What you can do is select part of the image that you want to change and it won't change any other part of the image. Here we can highlight the strawberries on the ground here. And by doing that, we can say we want two strawberries and then submit. All right, so you can see here through the four images that it changed just the part that we highlighted. Now I did ask it to do two strawberries and it didn't quite get it right. That's kind of where fine tuning your prompt in mid journey comes into play because it won't get it always right the first time. But what it did get right is that it is fewer strawberries than what it was before. So if we go if we go back to our original image, you'll see that it was a lot more than what's shown here. So let's go to our original image right here. And that's a lot more strawberries than 
what was created just now. Now you might look at the vary and remix actions and ask yourself, well, they look kind of the same, what's the difference? Well, the difference is the vary action does make a new image based on the one you have right now. Whereas remix, do, it does create a new one with the difference. But the main difference between these two is you can put in a new or update. So here, if you just kind of, you like the image, but you want it to be changed a little bit or maybe change the scene a lot, then you can use vary. Whereas remix, it'll let you change the prompt directly. So let's try out the remix action. So let's go strong and you'll see it automatically populates the prompt input box. And let's say a picnic basket with strawberries in a field while it is storming. And let's see what mid journey gives us. And here are the four new images it gave us. Kept the same idea of the image field and background with the picnic basket in the front and a pile of strawberries, but it did add the storm that we asked for. So let's take a closer look and see in the background of these images. Now it has a bit of rain to it in the background. And if you're trying to find some inspiration of what to create, Midjourney does give you this explore tab here. And all of these images you see here are created by other Midjourney users. So you can go ahead and take a look through and even create a prompt or an image prompt based on their image also. And then they organize by random, hot, and what's top for the day, week, or month. You can then go ahead and like an image that you like and save it for later and it'll be saved in this likes tab. And you can always go back to it later that way. And this create tab is all the prompts and the images that came with it that you have created. And then the edit tab is for plans that are above the basic plan is kind of think of it as a Photoshop, but then you take advantage of mid journeys AI. This personalized tab is locked for the basic plan, but what it does is let Midjourney learn what you like in images. So it'll ask you a bunch of questions on A to B. It'll ask you, do you like the left image or the right image? And based on your answers, it'll kind of get to learn of what style of images you like more. And this organize tab is how you can keep all of the images you create organized with all these fold different folder settings profile and filters, just kind of find the photo that you're trying to look for. And what's really cool is this chat room here. So if you click on chat, there's a couple different rooms. They have a newbies chat, general kind of chat room, a chat room for asking help, and a daily theme kind of chat room to keep it kind of fun. And this is just a chat room with other mid journey users. You can either ask for help from them or you can play along with the chat room theme or whatever the theme of the chat room is. If you go to the tasks page here, this is Midjourney giving you the opportunity to earn fast hours and let you generate your images a little faster. And you can do that in various ways, uh, like surveys, some other ways as well. And then that way you can earn some more fast hours.